Welcome to another edition of Brave Namibia, where we celebrate both ordinary and extraordinary Namibians. In our first clip today, we head to Volfus Bay, where Nicanor Nangolo met up with Talisandano Nangolo, a 2021 Mandela Washington Fellow and chronic health impairment advocate. She is also a biotechnology, bioinformatics and data science graduate. did my undergraduate in biotechnology, which is essentially the merge between technology and biology. That was of particular interest to me because of the vast opportunities in which it can essentially make our lives easier by the use of microorganisms. However, in 2018, I was diagnosed with an autoimmune disease called systemic lupus erythematosus. Essentially what it is, is it's the body fighting against its own organs. As you can imagine, that rendered me um, incapacitated for a while until I had gotten sufficient treatment. And I can proudly say I am currently in remission. I then pivoted to do bioinformatics and computational biology at Stellenbosch University, which essentially is the technological part or element of biotechnology in which now it's the merge of informatics and biology. So essentially it is carrying out biological analysis using computer and software tools. My passion for community work sparked as early as when I was in high school. Uh, I was part of Interact, which is a subdivision of Rotary International. This carried on in my undergraduate in South Africa, where I served on multiple charity organizations in different capacities. This built up my leadership skills and the passion and the work for community. This carried on when I came back and I was able to continue doing this work with my local Rotary Club. I am currently in the process of establishing my own NGO which will primarily focus on the youth and in the sense that it will focus on trying to establish a culture of celebrating progress, especially for the unemployed youth, because we currently have a staggering number of unemployed and educated youth. So trying to pivot and see what ways we as a community of young Namibians, especially educated, can do for our communities. One has to talk about passions. My passions really are gardening. I love gardening. It is very refreshing, therapeutic, and also that it really helps to contribute to in however way, in my own capacity, dwindling the effect that we have in terms of climate change. It is so refreshing and liberating really to eat from the works of your hands, essentially to reap what you sow. So that is really and truly one of my passions and I'm really hoping that it's a project that can really begin a ripple effect for so many people in however they can in their own capacities in their own homes to whether in, they're in the urban or the rural areas to start their own gardens to really um, provide for themselves in that way. The work that I've started in light of um, pioneering my NGO has been doing youth engagement seminars 
Um, one has been recently in uh, Lubango, Angola, and uh, the next upcoming up one in a few weeks will be in South Africa, essentially going to different schools um, to discuss the importance of a progress mindset and as well as addressing the issue of invisible disability, especially with chronic health impairment um, youth. One of the most memorable experiences that I can describe with the Mandela Washington Fellowship was building a network that is very diverse of different young people effectuating change in their different capacities. This has really helped to catapult me essentially into trying to diversify what I'm doing and trying to always make sure that it is um, human-centered in that in all the solutions and problems that I'm trying to solve that they're always centered around um, design thinking. Um, fortunately, the fellowship was virtual, but that did not really take away from the elements of um, enrichment in terms of content that was delivered to us, um, in terms of really pushing us in terms of what we can offer and how we could add value to our communities in our different mm -hmm. capacities. And thirdly, just brainstorming and working together with different people from different backgrounds, with different cultural um, backgrounds to see really how is it that, you know, different African uh, young leaders can come together and hopefully effectuate change in Africa in a good, innovative and brand new way. Recently, uh, due to my pivot in terms of my academics, trying to provision for my new um, health state due to the new diagnosis, I decided to pivot into the more technological side of things. I recently completed a bootcamp in data science and entrepreneurship with the launch lab, the Stellenbosch University. This was an intensive um, bootcamp that highlighted the importance of data and data analysis for data-driven decision-making. And that really opened up a new arena um, of insights in terms of what is actually possible with data analysis, data visualization, and most importantly, machine learning, how we can use what we know to arrive at what it is that we want, and also using it as a tool for problem solving. So in that sense, that has kept me busy and that has been one of the most refreshing courses I've done. In the same light, I've also now ventured and uh, exploring um, cloud computing because that is also a huge and very relevant and necessary part of everything that we are currently doing. I'm pretty sure you probably, chances are, if you are technologically savvy or probably not, you are most probably making use of the cloud. And so it's also very important to have people that understand that and that is also becoming a huge part of the work environment and also just in our personal lives. Lastly, my message for the youth and more so for the unemployed youth is not to dull too much. And I know, unfortunately, right now that is your reality, but to try and look and see what it is that you could be doing in the time that you're unemployed. For instance, you could spend more time upskilling and that could look so, that could look differently. Um, there are currently so many platforms that facilitate that for, for the youth.
right? Um, secondly, not to think that you have nothing to offer. You have so much to offer and your, your brain, you, you have achieved something monumental. And even if you're not a graduate, even if you didn't go through formal education, but you have something to offer, that in itself is something big. And it's something to pat yourself um, about or to really applaud yourself about. So that is one thing I'd really like to encourage is really to just seize the opportunity, try and see what it is around your community that you can do. And just please remember, your value is intrinsic. That means that everything external does not always really describe you as a person. So you have so much to offer the world. You just need to apply yourself. And remember, you don't have to do extravagant things. All you have to do is essentially apply yourself, look at how you could be doing something for your community. Sometimes it's really just a very basic thing, going to an orphanage, spending time with kids, reading, helping those with homework that feel they, they're not able to, having a group with other young people where you know you guys are of the same field and you guys have similar interests and just start to do something that will keep you preoccupied because when you're not doing anything it's so easy to arrive at a point where you are suffering from depression or you're feeling like you're unaccomplished or you're feeling like an imposter you have so much to offer the world just keep pressing on i know it's particularly very hard right now with the economic state and just how the world is you know unfolding and how, how everything in the world is happening right now but i'd really like to urge you you know if you need to start unfollowing people that make you feel like you're less than or you have nothing to add to the world then so be it if you need to start consuming content rather that uplifts you and you know start something new knitting um gardening and sometimes these things you don't have to start at a grand scale just something small if you bought a, uh, uh, a vegetable or uh, something that you could transplant do that and water it every single day or every other day just something to apply yourself remember you have value to give value is intrinsic not external Next we head to Tsumeb, where Ati Nell has been crowned the Maize Harvest King. In this clip, he and his wife Jolene spoke to Alvira Hutting about standing strong during tough times. Ek boeren Tsumeb, district Abana, so 20 kilometer uit Tsumeb. Uh, ek, ek het 1993 op die plaas gekom, en is een bykie 
probeer begin dus, waar ek begin planten. Maar die jaren was uh, soos die jaren 2013, 15, 17, 19, so achter mekaar, een goeie jaar tussen in. So, dit was maar wille jaren. En toen ik begin transport doen, om aan die leven te blijven. En uh, nou ja, ik uh, het 2012 teruggekomen plaatsen. Maar mijn vrouw is een onderwijzer geweest, alle jaren. Ja, en zij zij het nou klaargemaakt, haar laatste hoe sport was, hij was school van Kaarsveld die in Grootfontein. So, ek is een, ek is een nieuwe boer, Elvira. Ja. So, ons boer met uh, bees, bakskaap en natuurlijk nou akkerbouw. Ons wil in die besproeiing ingaan. Uh, maar uh, water is nogal een uh, <laughs> uitdaging om te krijgen. Ik heb een, een oudje groot geworden. Dit is harde wereld. Ik verlang nu nog naar na die wereld, want daar de bij memories. Maar ja, um, dit was, dit was goede tijd. Ja. En uh, dit het vir my, my hart vir, vir landbouw gegeen, van klein tyd. Ek altyd saam met my pa plaas toe gerei. Ek het boerderij boos sport en school verkies. Smaak my my senis ook so. <laughs> ja, hy maak hier die hart laag. Maak hierdie hart laag. Ons het al twee plaase groot geword, so ek denk die, die boerderij passie en boerderij liefde is, ek wil amper sê genetisch in ons. Um, ja, en as ek denk dier die zwaar jare wat ons al gegaan het en um, wat ek ook gedink het, sjoe, gaan ons het maak, gaan ons die deur gaan en die genade was daar geweest en ons is daar deur en dan geniet en waardeer jij die goede jaren um, rechtig waar. So, ja, die zwaar is daar. En ik denk dat mensen zo um, so gebouw dat jij vat het en je gaat daar weer. Want dus zo zeggen ze, die cyclus is daar. Ik denk niet ons zit in een um, bevoorrechte positie om met zoveel so, so technologie, met zoveel so mensen, met zoveel so kennis, dat de uitdaging beter kan beplan. Um, vir die tye wat het nie so baie reen en baie veld is en goeie oeste is nie. Maar ja, dit is ons passie, dit is ons liefde, ons allemaal. Na die droogte het ons geweldig baie bees verloor en ek het het gesien as een uitkomst en ek weet ons boer in Namibie nie is droogtes hylle is daar maar wanneer die droogte is voorbij is, is het goeie. Ek krijg ons goeie reen. Ek het drie jaar milies geoes met een stroper. Ek het na die droogte 2017 het ek vir drie jaar stroper gereid. En daar het ek baie gesien hoe plant hierdie boer, hoe plant die boer. En daar het ek besluit, ek gaan Argument van Tauwe, 760 rijen plan. Of zoals die ouders zeggen, 76 centimeter en 91 centimeter. Zo, so, ik heb op 76 besluit. Die planten staan hangen van coole reënvoorspelling. Ik meen, als ze er niet bij een goede reënvoorspelling in je wagen het om milies te plant, kan je ook hier te hoog planten staan planten. Nummer 1. Geloof. <laughs> jy moet, jy moet geloof, hè. Ja. En 
Dan Rien. Ik ken niks van Rien. En dan kennis. Je moet voor jou om een ring met um, kundige mensen, uh, professionele mensen. En boeren. Boeren wat jaren in die bedrijf is. Ik heb uh, ongelooflijk bij je geleerd bij Gerrit Engelbrecht. Dus Gerrit was mijn rechterhand. Daar was een ander, ou, ou Jan Jacobs van Marulabo. En hij heeft ook voor mij bij je geleerd. Ik ben dus die tweede jaar zonder, zonder alle kennis en alle bijdrage. Uh, so, <laughs> so dat die gekom het waar het is. Grootste uitdaging denk ek is om, om die rechte implementen te hee, as ek van buiten af kan kyk, um, want als jij gedierig met de trekker zit wat breek, um, of een planter wat die recht werk nie, gaan jij niet op die rechte tijd klaar geplant wees nie. Ek denk dit is geweldige groot uitdaging als je ou jong begin en jy begin onder, dan begin jy maar met de um, tweedehandse trekker en hy kan jou in die steek laat. Um, so ek denk van my kant op dit wat ek waargeneem het, was dit groot uitdagings. Die, die, die kennis natuurlijk ook, maar soos ons reeds gesê, daar is soveel mense wat, wat vir ons gehelp het en gesê, Atti maak so, maak dit, doen dit nou, step by step vir ons gevat het. So, so ja, ek denk ons implementen was een groot uitdaging en natuurlijk om, dit het vir ons een hele klompie geld ook gekost om, om ons lande groot, uh, groter te maak, want jy kan nie vir jou een nieuwe trekker koop en jy sit met 50 hectare en jy moet aan die einde van die dag moet jy al jou onkostes dek en jy moet nog hier die trekker ook betaal nie, so ja, ek denk dit is, dit is redelijk uitdaging. Ja, en die ander uitdaging is die nieuwe kunstmispryse. Sa, alle, o, dit baie dier geword, so dit is een brandstof. Dit is groot uitdagings. Ons verwacht een goeie reen, sê so, geloof dit. Soos ek nou net gesê het, ons kyk al vooraf na die natuurtekens. Dit lyk baie goed, ek meen is die grootste, die meeste oos weer in 40 jaar, soos ek verstaan het van die van die kusmense en daarom en dan natuurlijk Bacchus hier vir oktober maand sy weervoorspellings van internationale weervoorspellings wat hulle La Nina en El Nino en al die uh, sê temperatuur en goed en daarna vandag moet jy daarna kyk die technologie is daar dit is een moeilike land Ons weet verseker, ons het syklusse en uh, ons weet verseker die droogte kom weer. So daar volgens moet jy vir beplan. Um, ek dink net boerderij, akkerbouw, dis die keuze van elke boer om te diversificeer en dat jy nie net milies kan plant. Jy moet ander gewasse ook plant. Um, daar is daar is beruimte vir vir ander gewasse. Onder andere ek is een baie groot voorstaander van Sonneblom. Um, daar is katoen. Dit is alles droogte gewasse uh, boeinkies en dit is ook wisselbouw. En so, jy kan nie net met lees plant nie. about standing strong during tough times. 
Thank you for tuning in today. If you know of someone you feel should feature on our show, 